Peace and brand rising to the sovereign original indigenous natural divine air. Today is May the 15th, 1443 on the ancient moon calendar, 1442 on the ancient sun calendar, and 2022 on the Greco Roman calendar. All rise and stand and remain standing into perpetuity. This is a sovereign living ancient Article 3 Moorish American Al Moroccan court action. We are the sovereign living justice in capital seminary Shonolo in red ink, in propio persona de juris, in propio solo, and in propio heredes. I am Sovereign Living Justice, Pauline Denise Ritchie, and my free chosen sovereign appellation is Light to Jerry Bay. Both are in capitis diminution nolo, in red ink, in propio persona, futurist, in propio solo, and in propio for red ink. All Moors are the original indigenous, sovereign, ancient, Al Moroccan, Moorish American ascendants of the great pharaohs of Kemet and of the ancient Moabites and Canaanites. Our full faith and trust, our allegiance, our credit, and our energy are hereby vested in ourselves, for we are the people who are the original indigenous, natural divine, ancient empire state of Morocco. We are the de jure Moorish National Republic federal government. We are the original state united. We are the universal Moorish American consulate and the Article Three Moorish American consular court. We are peace. We are one nation, one state, one empire, and one God. We hereby accept our sovereign ascension and exercise all sovereign rights at this time and at all points in time, not so soon. Okay. I want to give you a description. We're going to start right off with this. A description of the defeated foe and what that defeated foe was up against. Let's let's just talk about well the description of the of the foe is that the the foe is defeated. Okay? The foe is defeated. We know that. Um that's according to the Holy Quran of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science as um, given by our prophet, Noble Juali. This is for the Moors who thought that you were in a fight. Okay, because I, I, I hear Moors all the time saying, this is war, this is a fight, this is war. Um, you need to know that, yes, you're in a war, or a fight, rather. It's a fight for those who claim that it's a fight. It's a fight. But our prophet said that it was going to be a breakfast fight. A breakfast, a breakfast fight is you're at the table and someone's passing the butter that way instead of bringing it back this way. Or they're passing things that way and... It's a breakfast fight. It's over by breakfast time. Okay. So for those who, who claim that they're in a fight, you are if you say that you are, but know that it's a breakfast fight. Our defeated foe, the foe is defeated already, picked the right fight to end all presumed fights. That one last fight that they picked has ended. It's a, it's a wrap on all fights because of that one last fight that the defeated foe picked. Initially, the defeated foe that presumed to fight the Moors thought that it was fighting a bunch of sleeping Moors who do not know who we are, who do not care to know who we are, and who do not care to remember who we are. That's what the defeated foe thought. We appeared 
to be, and I'm speaking in the past because it's a wrap, we appear to be easy prey who consented to fake court, fake fiat, fake food, fake commerce, fake threats, fake schools, fake police, fake spirits, and fake government, all crafted by fake words that only exist on paper that can only animate and pretend to be living if, if we spoke to it. We've chosen not to speak to that anymore. We've chosen not to speak to that anymore. Now we're speaking to subjects. Living subjects. However, the defeated foe made a huge, gigantic, ginormous, as they say, blunder in its strategy. Because as you know, we've been talking about strategy a lot, the strategies that we're using. Because we're strategic people, we're calculating everything we do. We calculate beforehand, and we know beforehand. Allah, which is all of us, is the best of all planners. So the defeated foe made a huge blunder. The defeated foe saw you and I and said to itself, I have robbed her of her spirit. I've robbed her of her past. I've robbed her of her present. And now I'm going to rob her of her future. That's what the defeated folks said. That was the blunder. That was the mistake. That statement and that presumption, because it's a presumption, in error, that presumption is proof that the defeated foe cannot see into the spirit realm. It can't see into the spirit realm. And that's why clearing energy and spirit work is so important. Because the foe that you thought you were fighting cannot see in that realm. So If the defeated foe could see in the spirit realm, and this is how you know, then the defeated foe would have seen us in our perfect perfection, in our all-knowing, all-powerful, eternal state, speaking back to us in this 3D realm from within us. If the defeated foe could see in the spirit realm, it would have seen our ancient selves, that's you, your ancient self, speaking to you, through you, into this realm. In the spirit realm, we're per we are perfect. In the spirit realm, we're perfect. We've not committed any crimes, any sins. We've not ever told a lie. We've never done anything in the spirit realm that is a sin. We are perfect. From time immemorial into perpetuity, we're perfect in the spirit realm. This dimension and this matrix that we see is not perfect yet. And that's by our own consent and us. But it's a project that we're doing. We use our thoughts, our feelings, our voices, the things that we want to manifest, and our questions to speak to ourselves in the spirit realm. And again, our, ourselves in the spirit realm is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-seeing. The all-seeing eye Listen, the all-seeing eye, you are the all-seeing eye, Moore. That eye is the letter I. The all-seeing eye is you and me. So in this realm, we speak to the all-seeing eye in the spirit realm and ask questions and speak things 
and seek access to the estate and further access to the estate, rather, because we already have access to it. That's why we say we already know everything. Okay. And so we speak these things, the questions and everything, to ourselves, to our perfect selves in the perfect spirit realm. So that our perfect, all-knowing selves in the spirit realm can speak directly to us from within and through us so that we can then speak what our spirit realm self says. We speak it into this dimension, into this imperfect realm, to make this realm perfect again. Because it was perfect once before. We know that. So all we're doing is speaking perfection into this realm. And we do that by sovereign affidavit. First by our voices and then by sovereign affidavit. Because that's what our affidavits are doing. Our affidavits are us, our perfect spirits, speaking the law into this dimension to have this dimension manifest perfection like it was in the beginning. And this beginning is long before colonizers, occupiers, and foreign matter ever existed. None of that existed in the beginning when we created everything. So what else didn't exist? The defeated foe never existed. It did not exist in the beginning. We actually had to create our own foe and then pretend to fall so that we could have a breakfast fight with the defeated foe and then return this dimension to its perfection the way we created it in the beginning. This is why we honor our eternal spirit by putting the words of God in affidavit, crafted by us, and then we seal those affidavits with the highest seal in heaven or in earth, our right red thumbprint, and our sovereign red autograph in all lowercase letters. And we can even seal it in blue in all lowercase letters, especially where commerce is concerned. We can do it either in red or blue. That is the determination of the sovereign. The sovereigns can do that. To, in order to bring that which we see in the spirit realm and make it manifest in this realm. And again, that's our wants, our desires, the things that we want for ourselves and all of that. So we honor our eternal spirits by putting the words of God in an affidavit crafted by us and sealed by us. Each and every more has a perfect spirit within them that's within you. And in reality, these bodies and temples that we have are essentially a living puppet for our spirit realm, ourselves in the spirit realm. Ourselves in the spirit realm speak to these chakras, and then we do and manifest. Now, Again, each and every more has a perfect spirit within them that will speak to them, through them, into this realm to manifest all that you can ask, think, or imagine. We call this process creation. That's, called, that's what creation is. Okay. Creating your reality. We have the authority to do that. Now, this is the hidden mystery that I'm about to tell you of the matter that we all must know. 
Okay. All of our tomorrows, all of our future is perfect. It's a perfect place. This that we see is perfect in the future. Tomorrow is perfect. And some people say tomorrow never comes. Oh, yes, it does. Today we're in a tomorrow. And it's better than the yesterday because we see our own power manifesting. That's what the grand rising is. And for the ancient ones, and this is the difference between us and the lower beings. And when I say lower, I, I mean lower in terms of their, uh, their uh, supernatural ability. Okay. The difference between us and them, again, we're one with everything and everyone because we created everything and everyone. The difference between the gods and the lower, the beings that are lower in our dominion is that for the ancient ones, all of our past since time immemorial is perfect also because we created them perfectly. We created our past perfectly. We created our future perfectly. Okay. Now that is what the defeated foe has to fight. Doesn't have to fight us. We're not in a fight. All we have to do is point the defeated foe to our past and then point the defeated foe to our spirit realm and our future that the spirit realm already sees. There are no false identities in the tomorrow, in our future. Just like there are no false identities today. There were no false identities in the past. Actors were pretending to have an identity that they did not have. And in the spirit realm, we can see that. In the past, in the future, and now in the present, there is only truth. We've already risen above the false identity. It's a wrap on those. There are no fake dead corpses in the past, in the present, nor in the future. There were none ever. There were actors pretending. We pretended to be citizens. Your spirit in the spirit realm and my spirit in the spirit realm is already in tomorrow and is looking at tomorrow and saying, okay, let me tell them. Let's tell him or her what we want them to know in order to create this because our spirit can already see us in tomorrow, in our future and in our past, our great and glorious past. Our spirit can see that already. Our spirits see us in our tomorrow state and give us the answers to manifest what is seen in our future. Our future is the place of perfection and so is our past. Our spirit can see both. This is why the defeated foe wanted to change our past and pretend like our past didn't exist and pretend that we were just slaves in the past who owned nothing and had nothing. But our spirit can see. And as our spirit kept telling us, okay, write this, put this, make this a law, make that a law, the fraud began to fall away and we began to see, oh, we have a great past. Let's see if we can see it. The defeated foe 
only had word, a narrative. To attempt to create a false past, a false narrative about us. That's the only weapon that they had, and it's not even a weapon, it's a paper weapon. They used the paper, the books in the in the education camp. Um, fake court documents, fake birth certificates. Fake social security numbers, words on paper and numbers on paper, a fake Bible, not the real one, because there's a real Bible. There's a real bibliotech that the ancient Bibles wrote. But they have, the, the, the defeated foe hypothecated that, and the defeated foe is an energy that seeks, goes about seeking whom that energy may devour or was previously going about. Let me, let me correct that because that energy has left the earth. For those who can, who assent to have it leave, if, if we kept calling it back, it was going to keep coming back. And, and there are some who are asleep who call on that energy. And it keeps coming back in the form of fear, frustration, uh, unbelief, and really we don't even go by beliefs and feelings. We go by the law. And natural law governs our feelings and beliefs. So our true path ends the whole fake narrative of colonialism, fake courts, fake policy enforcers, uh, corpses, uh, fake bills, fake debt. Our true past ends all of that. Our true future ends all of that, and we are making our true present end all of that. So now your superpower is being introduced to you through you. And here's the superpower. You have, you and I have the supernatural ability to cross the veil, and we've actually torn the veil in two, because there was a veil between the spirit realm and this dimension that we're in. There used to be a veil, and what was previously known as Halloween was a celebration that that veil existed. And that's why Halloween looked the way it looked. Because they were celebrating the fact that there was a veil and the Moors couldn't see into the, into the spirit realm. We couldn't see that our future is already set. We couldn't see that our past is already set so that we could set our present. That's what Halloween was initially. But now, Allah Ween is the celebration that we can see into both the spirit realm, this dimension, the past, the future, all of that. That's what that's what Allah Ween is now. So we can do not we don't really do ghosts. Because a ghost is is the is the remnant of that which was living but died. That's what a ghost is. But a spirit, a living spirit, is that which is alive eternally. Okay, the superpower. You and I, we have the supernatural ability to cross that veil, and and again, it's already torn. We've already we've already done it. And we can step into the spirit realm of the future or step into the spirit realm of the past, breathe in what you see, take it into our spirit, what we see in the future, as we go into that realm, 
and we can look in the past and go into that spirit realm and see what's there and see how great and awesome and amazing and magic we are. And then we have the uh, super ability to come right back to this dimension. And that only takes a nanosecond for us to go and then come because we, we can do that. That's magic that we do, living magic. We can breathe in what we see in either direction as far out as you want to go. And then come back into this realm and manifest our own destiny by sovereign living government affidavit accordingly and then change the things around us. That is what makes us our own masters, Lord. I, self-law, am the master. That's all more. That is what is, is what gives us our abilities as masters. We've mastered the past. We've already mastered the future. And guess what? Now we're mastering the present. That's what the testing is all about. The testing is master the present. Master that which is right here, right now. Okay? This super ability makes it so that the defeated foe has found itself trying to fight that which it cannot see. That's why it's a breakfast fight. The defeated foe can't even see. It's the defeated foe was tr was trying to fight our past, our present, and our future so that that they could steal it. But. It, the defeated foe was thinking that they were just fighting some sleeping moors who didn't know their own power, didn't know their own past, didn't know their own future, didn't know the present. But that was the blunder that we talked about. That's the blunder. The blunder is the defeated foe tried, tried to pick a fight thinking that it was just a sleeping moor not knowing that our past was coming with us, our future was coming with us, and we were going to manifest both in this present. This, more is why you and I are called the Holy Seed. That is why we are called the Holy Spirit, because we can see in the spirit realm the past, present, and future. Let me open the meeting really quickly. One of the more to come. Islam. Islam. So, Morris, listen, you are the Holy See all day, every day. And remember, when we were in our fleet, the fake corporate that were doing business as, quote, unquote, the Pope and, and the fake church, not the real church, because there's a real church, the fake church were trying to convince us that they could see into the spirit realm and we couldn't. It was important to try and fool us into thinking we couldn't see into the spirit realm unless we went through them. We are the spirit realm. This is what they teach in the quote unquote mystery school. Because it's the truth. It's like we're sitting at the table 
and we have our little doll, our idol, and we're saying, okay, speak to the idol, and whatever we speak, whatever we speak to the idol, the doll does. And then it changes everything around the doll. Just one moment. I know where you are. Hold on. So, we are risen more. We've already risen. It's a wrap on the rising in terms of uh, the initial rising. Okay. There is a continued rising that happens as we continue doing what we're doing. There is a continued rising that, that, that's going to go on and on and on and on into perpetuity. Okay. So use your superpower more as you're crafting your uh, affidavits and things. Use your superpowers to help you do that. Okay to help you craft whatever it is that you need to craft. Um, that brings me to where we are right now in terms of the spirit realm and the energies and the full moon, because uh, as you all may be aware, most are aware of this, that today, tonight, last night, tomorrow night, and the night before and the night after. But specifically today, the 15th of May, is a super flower blood moon and lunar eclipse in conjunction with Friday the 13th, which was this past Friday. So you know that the energies are on our side and inside of us as well. So the veil between the spirit realm and this realm is already, it is no more. All eyes can see. All eyes can see. All eyes can see. And so that is what makes this three-day fast that we're doing. And you can fast water only, or you can do liquids only, or just stay away from meat or sugar, or however you're led to fast. And stay away from negative energy, however you're led to fast. Today, tomorrow, and Tuesday. So that we can capitalize on the energy that is being set released into the atmosphere. And the energy is coming from us. It's coming from us. It is a conquering energy that does not stop ever. And that's natural and universal and galactic and solar system law. The energy comes from us and it causes super flower blood moons and lunar eclipses to happen all at once. We're doing that because of the bloodline and the birthright. Okay. So with that being said, there's an ancient Moorish proverb that states that a man falls and rises at the hand of his master. Whatever it is or whoever it is that is your master has control over whether you fall or rise. That's why we say Islam. Islam for us is I self-law am master. 
because that is how we rise. That's how we fell. We listen. We could not have pretended to fall by something that we said. Oops, that happened. Oh no, I didn't see that. That doesn't even exist with us. Oops, that does not exist with us. We can see all, and that we rise or pretend to fall by our own hand. All beings rise or fall or rise again by their master, whoever their master is or whatever their master is. And since Moors don't have a master except ourselves, therein lies the remedy. We are no longer in a fallen state. We are the risen state. We are the law and we are the government. Nation building starts at home. Our full moon fast, 15th, 16th, and 17th of May, tonight and tomorrow night, is the super flower blood moon and lunar eclipse. We are taking uh, having said that, uh, I want to make you aware that we're taking time away, just two weeks away from the calls, to do further ministry work on our merchant cards, tax liens, and court actions. Our strategy is to return to the calls on Thursday, June 2nd, 1443. We will not have our regularly scheduled congressional video assemblies on Thursday and Sunday for the next two weeks only, just the next two weeks. The plan is that we will not meet on the 19th, the 22nd, the 26th, nor the 29th of May. We will start our meetings again on Thursday, June 2nd, 1443. This will give us all time to get ahead on our documents and court actions in preparation for the next phase of our strategy to further access our vast estate. We're taking two, this two week period to put the merchant cards and their accompanying documents together and implement further Article Three court actions thereby. And we have the merchant card documents uh, together already but we're going to be printing up more merchant cards, uh, just like we talked about uh, a week ago where we showed the difference, for example, grocery store club cards and all of that. Uh, we're going to be doing a reversion of the state on the grocery store benefit, the benefit where those uh, cards are concerned. Okay, so keep in mind that this coming Thursday, we will not meet. Next Sunday, we won't meet. We won't meet the Thursday or Sunday after that. We will come back on June the 2nd, 1443, and get more done, more done. Um, I would encourage you during this time to go back and listen to the calls that we've done so far. We've put many, many uh, congressional meetings on the public record. Um, so that we can all be on the same page and doing the same thing, okay? Um, it's, it's important that we stay together during this time and, and at all times, okay? Um, and continue to go within the spirit realm so that, that we can see what needs to be done. We know merchant cars need to be done because we've already seen in the spirit realm where all of this is going. When we first started doing lean, we couldn't see this far in the spirit realm in terms of the detail, and I can't even say that because we did. We just didn't recognize at the time in this realm. We had not spoken it to ourselves in this realm, but now we see where it's all connected. Okay. Um, no, uh, no foreign matter could have ever put all of this together where we're concerned. We all had to do it, okay? 
So please keep these dates in mind. This will give us time to get ahead on our documents, and then we're taking this time to work on the spirit realm and the energy, and we have to start that with us. Okay, and I'll tell you why that's important based on some of the calls that I've received in the, uh, just in the past three or four days, the calls that I've received from the different moors. Okay, the spirit work. First, it starts with you, your energies, your emotions, your desires, your will, your body, your mental, that's the mind, your ego, and yourself. We're returning divine health energy to us. Divine health energy is within us to propel our workout, okay, because we all more need to be working working out. We should be. I can't say we need to be because you can't tell more what to do. Uh, and that's not really a command or anything like that. That's just a, a fact that we do need to be working out. Uh, protection of our bodies includes um, phasing out certain things. And you know what to phase out, okay? Uh, no one can tell you specifically what to phase out because only you know what you do from one day to the next. And then phasing in. So again, this takes place over time. It doesn't have to be done in one day. We could all improve divinely, and we will, and we shall improve divinely. The divine health will happen over time as we work diligently and often to manifest our healthy energy. Okay? It's over time. For some, it'll take a year. For others, it'll take five years. For others, it'll take 10 years. And for others, it'll just be a steady improvement into eternity. And really, it's that for all of us. So when someone says, hey, how are you doing? You say, I'm improving. <laughs> I'm improving. That's improving perfection. That's what all of us are doing. Receive a call from a more whose privacy we will protect. Okay, and this is, again, where things are going more. These are some of the calls that I've received uh, lately that we need to be aware of, these energies that are leading to. I received a call from a Moor who has known about the termination of corporate contracts, who has known about not contracting, with foreign matter. And um, I had not sp spoken to this more until he called this week. And when the more called, they were calling from a jail. And he began to tell me what was going on with him. And of course, our hearts are with him. Our hearts are with him. But this is what happened. He's known about the termination of all corporate contracts. And mentally, those energies that caused him to feel desperation went in, those energies were given room in his life. And what did he do? He filled out a job application instead of notifying them by affidavit of who he truly was and is. He filled out a job application and I asked him, I said, when you did that, did you know that we're not the contract with him? He said, yes, I knew. And on his way, because see, the ancestors were telling him all along the way, don't do that. Don't do it that way. You can have the benefit, but don't do it that way. Use your affidavit and your court to get what is rightfully yours. And he did not listen. And when he didn't hear in his actions, because see, we know that we hear by what we do, not what we say, but what we do, okay? And by what we say. And he filled out a job application and on his way to the interview, so he was given many opportunities to say, to terminate that contract. On his way to the interview, he was arrested.
And um, he called me from a place that, that, that was detaining him. And, and, and the full story. I, I appreciate his honesty in letting us know that because that's a, that's a word for us to hear and to know. Do not contract with them. Those who want employment use your affidavits and your court actions and the termination of corporate contracts to do that for you. Okay. Use it to do that for you. Because they know and we know and everyone knows that we are not to contract with them. It's even in the bibliotheriotech where it says, do not contract with them. Don't do it. It's in the law not to do it either. And we're going to show you that in just a minute. So uh, he said this, this more, and you know, one of the things he said is he needed to put food on the table for his two children. And I told him, I said, you cannot put food on the table by contract. That's not how you get food on the table, or else there wouldn't be so many uh, people out on the corner talking about we'll work for food, holding up signs who know about contracts. The people that you're seeing out there are many, the majority, like the ones that we see in this territory are uh, modern Europeans who uh, many of them had corporate jobs, quote unquote. And some of them had high, what would be considered, quote unquote, high level corporate jobs. What does that look like? They were quote unquote scientists doing business as scientists and analysts and this and that. Uh, CEOs, they've had their own company. Talk to some of them. If you talk to them, you'll hear them say, and I don't talk to them, but you can go on YouTube and look at interviews where they said, I used to be this and now I live under a bridge. If corporate contracts worked for anyone, it would have worked for them. It's certainly not going to work for us. And most of the more that are on these calls and that here had corporate jobs at one time and high level ones in many cases. If those contracts work, we'd still be there, but they don't. We must speak by affidavit and that's how the, that is how the economy is going to start back up in the favor of the Moors, is we're going to speak by affidavit and that is how employment happens. We're employing ourselves and we work for our state. of which we are the fiduciary and government and law and controller of our state, our state. So now this more has to demonstrate his way out of the contract that he consented to sign. See, things have switched more and are in their rightful place in terms of those who speak by affidavit will get all that they command. Those who try and cover and use a fake covering of citizenship in a fake corporate matrix will have issues. I know of Moors right now, some of whom are, I they're close to me, who have what would have been termed high-level jobs, quote unquote. They were, their worth is six figures. And at one point they were making six figures. And now they're not. In fact, the majority of what they bring in is being taken at a rate of about 43%, and that's just taxes. That does not include fake debt that's being heaped upon them. So 
more listen. We have we we must continue to stand. And for those who stand, your benefits are are here already. Just continue to manifest them. I received another call. Um, and, and let me just say this too. Those, uh, I had a more who called me and I, I just, I mean, this more is, is, he's very powerful. And again, all mores are very powerful. I had a more call me because there was a dispute in his domicile. Very powerful more. A dispute in his domicile between him and his consort. And he was he was very upset. I could hear it in his energy. And he was at initially he was going to call the policy enforcers to quote unquote keep her out. And um, the spirit, his spirit said, no. Call um, uh, call light. And, um, and 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 talk to her, okay. And now again, he's not a follower. I don't have any followers, okay. We all lead ourselves, and we talked, and I I made it clear to him that it's a good thing that you called first to to get a level to level your emotions. Simply because those who call the policy enforcers, any of any more who call the policy enforcers, you're contracting with them and they're going to take the one who contracts with them. They're not going to take anyone else. They're going to take the one who contracts with them because when you call them, you're agreeing to be surety. For that contract that you've made. So you're thinking that you're getting remedy when you're the real remedy. You're the remedy. So you let you look into the spirit realm and see what your remedy is in terms of when you're facing situation in your Dharma style. Look into the spirit realm first before you make any moves. Look into the spirit realm first so that you can see what to do and what's best for you. Okay? So um, with that being said, One other thing that I wanted to point out, and then we'll, then I want to show you um, the document, a document that we're putting, that we put together. We started showing you the document last, um, on the last call, but we want to show you this demonstration that we, this has been an ongoing demonstration for a while. But let me say this, uh, if you are having, if you receive anything, in the mailbox, no matter whether it's in the mailbox or you're at a place and, and someone hands something to you, in order to know if the instrument that has been handed to you is a living instrument or a dead instrument, look at the top of the page. Whoever, or, or look at the bottom of the page. Whoever's letterhead issued the instrument will tell you if it's a living instrument or a dead one. If, it, if, the, if the letterhead is not your letterhead, Moore's National Republic Federal Government letterhead, then it's, it, it's issued by the dead. Or another Moore's government, it needs to be issued by your government or another Moore's government for it to be a living document. Otherwise, 
It's a dead document. And here's the thing about those dead documents. We look at them and then we do a reversion of the state on all of it. So we don't just trash them. If you don't want to receive it and you want to to uh, get it back to the dead, land of the dead, go ahead and do that. But now that we are the state and the law and the government, we look at it and we say, "What? where's the bank account on this? We can do a reversion of a state on this. Let's do a reversion of a state on it. Let's lean whoever sent it. Lean whoever sent it. And then when we lean them and and, and, and Moses, you know you know what to do. Lean a court action and um then start creating whatever credit you deserve and you need and you want. And you don't need it, just whatever credit is there. Because it's really a matter of the credit already being there. It's there already. Okay? It's not anything that you have to um, to look for. <clears throat> More, no words. Uh, So here, let us. So now, what we want to um, take a look at is the document from before, because there have been some changes to the document more. This, uh, as you all know, we have been. Um, doing demonstrations in the territory and uh, where the city of Federal Way Corporation was concerned. So Friday the 13th came this past Friday and we prepared the following demonstration and put the demonstration forth. So let's take a look at uh, the demonstration. Because in your territories, Morsier, this demonstration is going to be important because we all really need to do this in our territories. Um, this is the reason why we put the um, constitutions on the public record. Okay? And this is why we've been doing court actions and things, that with all the things that we've been doing regarding any fraudulent paper that's been issued, any um, detaining of the heirs, this is, these processes that we have been doing where we do the six documents, which is the, the name, appellation change, judicial proclamation, that's the one. A proclamation of trust, a termination of all corporate contracts is number three. Uh, number four is a lien on the social security number and the non de gear war name as issued by the United States Corporation Company, the dead one. Uh, the fifth thing is going to be uh, a lien on the United States Corporation Company, the dead one, the black one. And then the sixth document is the fiduciary document. And then you always want to have your Moorish ID and some Moorish Sovereign Delarium with those, okay? Um, those are the six court actions that we use and that we put on the public record for all demonstrations that we're doing. So we have shown you in the past uh, the fraudulent documents that were issued, the black documents that were issued where there was a ticket and there was um, some, some fraudulent corporate court action against their fraudulent court that they called Richie Pauline Denise, 
Okay. So again, they weren't doing anything that had to do anything to do with me. They because I'm me. I'm here right now. This is me. Um, they were speaking to their corpse. Okay. And if at any time more, I won't say if because I'm not going to make room for that. But this is why the fiduciary document is so important. We took the bank account numbers that are on all of those documents, okay, and maybe we'll show you a couple of those documents again. You've seen them. We took the bank account numbers on each of those documents and we naturalized and nationalized the sequence, the benefits that comes with it, okay. Again, a benefit only comes by way of the creditors, not any fake thing that, that frauds issue. Okay. So with that being said, we looked at those documents, we leaned everything in sight. And um, then what we did was because we're in this territory, we put the Washington Constitution, not the state of Washington, corporation. That's why we looked at what the state of Washington Corporation did and we said, okay, we need to we need to nationalize and naturalize the benefit that comes with a constitution. Because see, only debt comes with theirs. So we had to write the whole thing out and all we did was really copy and paste and then go through it and 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 fix, take out the corruption in our in what we did. We took the corruption out, okay, and then we put it on the public record. So now, instead of this land here being, quote, unquote, called state of Washington, and them saying, you're in the state of Washington, no, no, corpses are in the state of Washington. The living is at Washington territory. It's just Washington. That belongs to the Moors. So we did a final judgment. We did a final judgment because, as you know, we've put many court actions on the public record with regard to the demonstrations that we've done here. There was a couple of detentions where, where we went into the POW camp and uh, looked around and did some testing, okay? and. Um, we came out of the testing victorious, of course. And so what we did was um, we did court actions following each one of the testings that we did. And we put those court actions on the public record. So, and then we gave what they call deposition. Deposition is really what that is. That means moving someone out of a position and putting the real in that position. So we did a couple of videos. One of the videos is entitled, I was detained and this is what happened. And here's what happened. That is a deposition. That means that the living is giving testament and testimony of what happened. And was that testimony rebutted? No, it was not. Now, hear me on this more, because this is so important. When we did our demonstration, particularly the one that we did in February, uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, when we did that demonstration, one thing that did not happen is that the frauds did not blast our images all over the news because they don't have our images. That's number one. They didn't blast that all over the news and say, oh, some quote unquote more sovereign citizens were arrested this weekend. They didn't do any of that. They couldn't because that's not who was being, who was detained. Okay, they know that. So 
they didn't blast that out there like that because they never had jurisdiction in the first place to speak about the living. And the living, we proved that we were the living. Now, we're not saying anything about anything negative about those Moors who demonstrated beautifully and who there was falsehood put out there on them. We're not saying anything about that except that we honor their work because we're learning and remembering from all that's being done. But when a year ago that we did that demonstration, the POW demonstration, they didn't put a whole blast out there, oh, you know, we got them, that siren said, you know, they didn't do any of that. That's not to say that that, 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 that news blast may not go out at some point. They might, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. They didn't do it then because they know that you cannot report on the living. You can't report on, on the, the more who, that even when they did blast things out there, they were still not talking about the living. They were talking about their court. And the Moors could never be that. So we knew then, and even when we got out of that demonstration, when we finished the demonstration successfully, um, and the ones who were unlawfully occupying the, the, the building that we were at on our land, when they were booted out of there quickly and, and we came out and the building was vacant and clearly marked vacant, um, we knew then that we would go on the public record, give our testament of what happened. But I didn't see in the future then that that video was going to be testimony for this case, this judgment that we're issuing. Okay. Uh, that video, among many others that we've done, is deposition and testament. Deposition, we're moving, we've moved any corpses out of the way. That's what depositioning is. And so we took and did a reversion of the state on these causes of action here. We placed these causes of action on the public record. And we said, okay, since we put the Constitution on the public record for this land mass here, we looked at what they did and we said, okay, we're going to, we're going to, instead of it being uh, Pauline Denise Ritchie in Capitalist Diminution Nolo, the sovereign, going versus someone, we're going to bring the land forth and the state forth. Washington, as you see it on the screen, is one of the several states of the states united, okay? That's why we have the United States in red, the United States for America in red at the top of our document, our letterhead. The United States for America, that's us. Washington is one of those states united. Okay? And so what is Washington in all capital letters and blue ink as done by, as issued by our sovereign state? Washington is a natural person, a living natural person presented by sovereign living state fiduciary and Chief Justice Pauline Denise Ritchie. And then again, Morris, you all are Chief Justices too in your territories and states, and we're all Chief Justices together for the empire. So don't let anybody get you hung up on titles, pre-titles, okay? Because we all have all the same titles. And then we reference Federal Rule for Civil Procedure Title IV, Law 18, at a like fiduciary. The fiduciary uh, is the living, national, natural heir 
and then the fiduciary has control of the person of Washington. And Washington, I know this looks familiar more, because as you know, whenever those corpses would do something against their corpse, they would say city of so-and-so versus their corpse, or state of so-and-so versus their corpse, or United States of America in all black ink and capital letters on their letterhead versus whomever their corpse is. So they were never talking to us, and we're not talking to the dead. We're now speaking to the living, the living subject. So now we're saying Washington is the plaintiff of whom we control Washington, okay? More as you control your territory and the state of your territory. Versus, and then we put the names of those, the corporate name, we put it in all capital letters because Corporations speak to corporations, and the living speaks to the living, okay? And so we put the names of those corporate, corporate subjects who were involved in these um, events, okay? And... Um, Not only is this a court action and command to appear for final judgment, because we've already done all the other court actions. That's why this is, a, this is just announcement of final judgment. And it's also a tax lien. It's a 1099 acquisition also. Okay. It's a court action. It is creation of an account. Okay? And the primary tax lien cause of action number or account number is this. This series of numbers is... Um, the antithesis or the opposite of the debtor numbers that they were using to create debtor accounts and corpse accounts and corporate, although it looks similar. Just like we might look like, quote unquote, black, but we're not black, we're Moors. So to some who don't know, we look like black, but we're not This number looks like the same debtor number that they were using, but it's not. It's a creditor number because we created it. And what did we do? We looked at, we went back through all of the events that happened to us and for us, the events that we promoted and provoked and triggered and activated. We activated all that, all that has happened. Moors, remember we said that we call forth our own test. So what did we do? We looked back at all of those things happened in uh, 2019, uh, January of, of 2021, um, February 6th and 7th of 2021, um, October of 2017, and also December, this, this one right here, this number is uh, also December 10th, 1430, uh, 1437, 1438, right. Okay, so what we're doing is 
making sure that we give an account, an account of all that has happened by our court action. So this one is, is the primary tax lien cause of action number. And that's, that was created on this date by our court based on that, the activity and the action that happened. And as you know, this December 10th, 2017, uh, I was five months old in Morse Science, and I, was, uh, I did a POW demonstration for 26 days, I believe it was, 26, 25, 26 days, somewhere around there. Uh, and um, you all know about that. We talked about, we've done videos where we gave our, our deposition, our testament, our testimony of what happened. And it remains unrebutted also. Okay. And since the things that we placed on the public record remain unrebutted, we're going to go ahead and issue final judgment and final justice on the court actions that we've done in the past where this whole awakening and uh, knowing who we are, not pro tunk is concerned, okay? Now, um, the crime of these right here, these subjects, the crimes are as follows, and there's a total of three of them, and I'll show you why I chose these particular crimes uh, as charges. This is, this is important, Morris, because when I look back into 1932, 1933, um, all during that time period, right after our prophet left this plane in physical format, in physical form, um, there was a lot of antitrust court stuff going on. And it was corporate and fake. A lot of antitrust. And I, I thought, where is all of that coming from? Well, now I know. So... Title 15, Chapter 1, Subsection 1. At Commerce and Trade. Let's take a look at that. Because this is what it says. Okay. It says every contract combination in the form, in the form of trust or otherwise or conspiracy in restraint of trade or commerce among the several states or with foreign nations is declared to be illegal. Okay. Every person who shall make any contract or engage in any combination or conspiracy hereby declared to be illegal shall be deemed guilty of a fell on need and on conviction thereof shall be punished by fine not exceeding 100 million if a corporation or if any other person 1 million or by imprisonment not exceeding 10 years or by both said punishment in the discretion of the court. So let me put the link to that and let's just take a look at where that came from. I'll put the link to that in the chat. And it'll also be under this video. Okay, so let's take a look at that really quickly.
And again, these U.S. codes are the original U.S. codes. As you can see, this on the screen, this is HTTPS forward, uh, colon, forward slash, forward slash, um, uscode.house.gov. It does not say www.uscode.house.gov because this is not on the World Wide Web. It is on the internet, the basic original internet. Okay. So now let's look at Chapter One: Monopolies and Combinations in Restraint of in Restraint of Trade. It doesn't say in Restraint of Commerce, and it doesn't say in Restraint of Buying Things. It says in restraint of trade. So let's look at that one really quickly. And here it is on the screen. We'll go ahead and put it right up here at the top. And this is where it says every contract, every contract, not, it, it does not exclude even one. Every contract in the or combination in the form of trust or otherwise or conspiracy in restraint of trade or commerce among the several states or with foreign nations is declared to be illegal. What does that mean, Morris? Let's talk about what that means. Just one moment. Let's go back to our document here. Because, of course, we rewrote this uh, because we're presenting it ourselves. Oops. Let's see. Just one moment. Let me go back to the document. Okay. We wrote it out here. Every contract or combination, and it doesn't even say or combination, it just says combination. So, just one moment. I'm going to take it out of lecture mode and put it in um, So when it says combination, Morris, what does that mean to you? Just out of curiosity. Say it again, Empress. Something combined. Yes. And 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 what does that look like? No, uh, what is the combination of a contract? Combination of laws. Of what inference? Of laws. Yes, in a way. In a way. When a country has more than one function, one was previously a performance, an action, and then to you. Yeah. Now that you see one single action in front of you and behind it, there's a different action causing behind the different entities taking different actions. Yeah. As a combination. That too. That too. Yes. Both of you are correct. Yes. That too. What about Islam? Islam. What about policies and ordinances? Yes, Islam. Islam. Yes. Combination also means, in, in, in conjunction with what's been said thus far, because those, those are all correct. Combination also means whether you write it or whether you speak it or whether your body language says that this is a contract. So it's saying every contract combination. 
It's um, uh, Islam in uh, I think it uh, it would include anything that's legal as well as lawful. Yes. 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 See, the lawful, con- that's great, Empress. The lawful contract is us speaking or us writing. The legal is us agreeing, okay, together, agreeing, and then putting that in writing also. On statute. So uh, where you are on the annotations, but there's a difference in the annotated law and the real law. Yes. Yes. The real law is is us. Right. Annotated is just writing it down. Is this back up to the um, law that says anything that's um, re- um, repugnant to the Constitution is unlawful? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So any contract, every contract, every one, that is made, that crosses that veil, is illegal. That's why they keep taking people who contract with them, because it doesn't matter what the contract says. It's illegal. And then they turn around and use what they call, quote, unquote, legal ease to continue to detain. Every contract, no matter whether it's spoken, written, or by our behavior, that we attempt to make or act out with these frauds, with with fraudulent dead corpses, is illegal. It doesn't matter that you... That, that that people think that, well, I, I, I crossed out this and I put that, I crossed, you know, we were doing that as we were waking up more, but, but again, we speak by affidavit. An affidavit is not a contract. An affidavit is a command from the government that says those resources belong to us, so we're going to utilize them. And that's why... Some people, they try and tailor and all of that, a a contract with them, don't do it. An employment contract, don't do it. Use your affidavit to get your employment benefit. Use your affidavit to do that. See, they've always known this right here, but they were not going to tell you. And sometimes, like in the past, they would welcome you into the employment place, and they would have a welcome party. I know I, uh, when I first um, took a national training analyst position with a corporation back when I was asleep, and this was in the early 90s, that corporation, they, had, they, they sent gifts to the, to the domicile and everything. Welcome, welcome. We're so glad you're with us. Okay. No wonder. No wonder. And we're thinking, man, I'm making more than I've ever made. No. We have to do that by affidavit. We have to do it by affidavit. Because those who don't do it. Now, this is not us more. Okay, this is not a. But you see what the penalty is. You see what the penalty is. This is where we get one hundred million from for our merchant card. More. That's where we get a hundred million from. 
if at the discretion of the court. Why? Because there was a restraint on our trade. When we were doing, when we were demonstrating the building that's ours down the way, we were doing it in commerce. It was, it's a commercial exchange. But there was someone trying to hamper and restrain our trade. That's illegal to restrain our trade, our sovereign trade. That's illegal. It's illegal to restrain our sovereign trade. So now, trade is not, it's, it's a different kind of trade if you're using their military script. They can restrain that all day. Let's just put that where it belongs. They can restrain that all day. And as you can see, they've done that. That's why we had to do what we've done with Delarium and all of that. We should not be suffering. We should not be lacking anything. It re now, uh, that's a good question in the chat. Justice Jay said, how does this code relate to trust? Your trust is where you put whatever it is that you're trading. Okay? Your trust is where the, tr the instruments, whatever it is that you're trading, it, it's either coming from your trust or going into your trust. Not only that, but any all capitalized, for example, Washington, Washington is in the trust of the people, the people in this territory. And it's in the trust of the states united, the living more states united. That's why we can be the fiduciary and speak and put some things on the record for it and say, Washington says that you did something wrong. Because Washington is in the trust of the people. These are all trust instruments. That's why the fiduciary document, read it and study it. Justice J, read the fiduciary document and study it because it will tell you about all of all everything being in our trust, no matter what letters and numbers are used in order to put it on the paper. And that's why we speak by affidavit because our affidavit shows us our trust. Our trust is in our government. You cannot fill out their documents because all you're doing is, is saying your trust is in them. I know that the ancestors speak to us from the spirit realm when I get calls like that from the Moors, when a Moor is calling and saying, I, I wasn't doing anything wrong. All I did was I was going to a job interview and they picked me up. Well, I know that when things like that happen, that it's direct, directly related to the job or the job interview. That's why I ask the questions that I ask of him. Did you fill out an application to get the job? Well, yeah, I did. Did you know not to contract with them? Yeah, I knew, but I got to put food on the table for my children. You can't do that from behind the heart. You put food on the table by actually going and employing yourself to go, go and do whatever you need to do. You do that by affidavit. You do that by affidavit, Morris. No other way. There's no other way to do it. Because those you can see repeatedly in different aspects of the law that that's unlawful. So now, um, that's, 
the first charge is restraint of trade. That's, that's restraint of trade. So that's where that comes from. What's the second charge? The second charge is antitrust crime. Okay. See, now we can talk about antitrust because the subjects, we actually, they, the subjects, the living subjects are in our trust. That's why when we say all rise and stand and remain standing, that they have to do exactly as commanded. Because living subjects are held in our trust. They are trust property. All, everything in all capital letters, as created by us, is in our trust. Including, for example, with, 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 with myself, Pauline Denise Ritchie, in all capital letters, in blue ink, in red ink, in green ink, in purple ink, in black ink, no matter what it is, it's in my trust. I get to say what happens to that instrument. And so do you. And so then we look up antitrust crime because all subjects are in our trust. And if they don't do what needs to be done, then this is how we deal with them. Okay? So we looked at Public Law 137, Chapter 283, Sections 4A, 5A, and 5B. There is also a House Resolution 4954, uh, dated July 7, 1955, that goes along with that. So let's take a look at that and put this link in the chat also so that you can look and see what we're, what we're discussing here as well. Okay. And again, antitrust is the same as antichrist. Okay. Antitrust is a fake trust. Just like antichrist is a fake Christ. Okay. Um There is diversity in the words. The words look the same, but they're being put out by a, 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 a different entity that's trying to sound the same as us. Okay? So again, all capital letters is in our trust. That's not us. It's in our trust. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a subject and a property in our trust. And that is how we manifest things in this dimension. So let's look at this uh, U.S. code, uh, this public law. Uh, let me see if I can make sure that this is on the screen so you can see where we're going with all of this. Because see, when you start talking about trust and antitrust, now you're talking about the QV. There was a fraudulent one, and there is a, a, a real one. The, the real SESTA QV or SESTA KV, however you choose to pronounce it, it's a French term, and in, in, our, in French we say SESTA QV or SESTA KV. Um, when you're talking about that trust, we have a living SESTA KV trust, and then there's a dead one, an antitrust, that was pretending and presuming to hold all of the all capitalized, all the capital. Let me put it that way. The SESTA QV, and that's why when you read SESTA QV, when you go back and read that, the Act of 1666, it talks about profit. P-R-O-F-I-T, as in a corporation that makes a profit. It talks about vesting that profit back, that when the living come back and, and state who they really are, um, that, you know, when, when, when the living come back and state who they really are, all the mean profits, 
are vested back and titles are vested back into the proper trust, not the fake one. So let's look at this that's on the screen. I see you in the chat there. Uh, and, and I'll say this about anything like that. My, my response is, is not going to change with regard to that, Justice Alonzo. My response won't change. It's the same one, the six documents. And then if you're talking about property and things, you need to have the rest of those 40 documents on the public record. Why? Because of the currency controller. You're controlling your own currency. The, the sovereign postmaster general, you're, 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 you're delivering your own documents and all of that. Okay. So um, here, Public Law 137, Chapter 283, uh, and this is an act, but we, we've rewritten it and we're making it the law. Let's look here at Section 4A. It says, whenever the states united, and that's what when we, we say United States for America, is hereafter injured in its business or property by reason of anything forbidden in the antitrust government of the District of Columbia. You see how they put that? Uh, one, just one moment. Let me go back one more time. Okay. Whenever the United States is hereafter injured in its business or property, and now you're, you're talking about exchange and the restraint of exchange. That's illegal to restrain exchange and, exchange and re restrain trade. Whenever the United States is here and after injured in its business or property by reason of anything forbidden in the antitrust laws, it may sue, therefore, in the United States District Court, and look at district and court. Those are two lowercase letter words. That, means don't, that doesn't mean the one down the way. That means you. For the district in which the defendant resides, okay, or is found or has an agent without respect to the amount in controversy, and shall recover actual damages by it sustained and the cost of suit. What is this saying? This is saying that our courts, and this is why we, we, we're going to send our judgment, our final judgment, to the, you know, uh, the district court in this district. Because, again, we, that's our district court. That's a lower court. Okay. It's a lower court, a constitutionally inferior court, and we're going to have them enforce it as well. And who is the defendant that resides or is found or has an agent in that district? I'm the fiduciary, and Washington is the agent that resides in that district. This is the ancient district for Columbia. We talked about that. We saw it on a map from the 1800s that this Washington over here, where at Seattle, where Seattle territory is, this Washington is ancient district for Queen Columbia, okay? That the fake Washington corporation over there that's really Virginia and Maryland modeled itself after in order to um, in its living sense, be subject, and in its dead sense, you serve. Okay? So, our all caps, any all caps that we're the fiduciary of is either an agent or a, it can be a defendant. Okay? And if you'll notice here on the document that we're, that we're putting this on, um, the defendants are in all capital letters and blue. Those defendants belong to us. There's one moment. Make sure.
Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So any res ident, because these are res ident, these are residents that are descendants here. Okay. Residents and they're in our territory, our Washington, not the state of Washington. They're all, they were only in the state of Washington when they thought they were dead and when they were pretending to be corpses and corporations and dealing with citizens. But they're not that. They are our residents. Okay. They are our residents. Okay. Hey, so, Pauline, if you were victorious in your jail sentence, why don't you go back to First Avenue? One moment. If you were victorious, Pauline, why don't you go back and claim that building? What's up with that? What took you so long? What you waiting for? Yeah, one well, moment. You know what, Pauline? I'm inviting you to Now, uh, we'll and so on. So with regard to this um, court action here, the defendants here are residents. They're residents of Washington, the plaintiff. Okay. Washington, and, and, and we're the fiduciary for our territory. So we put the Constitution on the public record. We put the, the county charter on the public record, okay? Those things are on the public record, and they're receiving copies of them. They'll be receiving copies of them tomorrow or sometime this week, whenever, whenever. Uh, and, in fact, they've already received copies because we, put, we, we notified that those copies are on the public record. And so... Um, Islam. Islam nobility. Uh, okay, just one moment. Let me let me go back. Uh, okay. Okay. Can you see it now, Empress? Islam. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, I try to I try to keep an eye on that. Uh, Okay, so these are these defendants are residents. This is how you get uh, how everyone gets back in their proper place. Okay, if you've seen the liens that I've done on the City of Federal Way Corporation, you'll see these uh, some 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 names that look like these, but they're not these. They're courses. So what did we do? All rise and stand and remain standing. Now. We got residents here, okay? And so with us having uh, them in their proper place, okay, um, just one moment. Let me get that other one. Just one moment. There it is. Good. Okay. So now, um, let's see. Uh, okay. So now you have living res ident that are living in your territory. But you have to lean that corpse and stuff all out of the way, do court actions, send that death on, uh, and now you have living subjects. Now, the living subjects are going to get the final just, justice or judgment. Okay? Um, 
because we've are we have removed the corporate covering off of them. Okay. Now, um, we looked at the documents, and again, that's where these account numbers come from. This is an account number. This is an account number. This is an account number. All of these are bank account numbers. And that's why we're talking antitrust, because you've got bank account numbers going back and forth. You have, um, and they're not going back and forth, the bank account numbers are, um, you're talking sovereign credit and bank account numbers and bank, and again, we're the bank. So we have a right to create account numbers as fiduciary for our territory. And so when we, when we look at this antitrust, we're looking at 4A, 4, uh, 4A, 5A, and 5B. So let's take a look at those uh, really quickly. Okay. Um, let's look at 5A. 5A says a final judgment. Islam. Uh, is there any way you can open that up a little bit so we can see it? Sure. Awful tight. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Empress. Is that better? Okay. Uh, is, okay. Thank you, Empress. Okay. It says a final judgment or decree heretofore or hereafter rendered in any civil or criminal proceeding brought by or on behalf of the United States, and again, we're rewriting this so that it says United States for America, and Washington is one of the United States for America. A final judgment or decree heretofore or hereafter rendered in any civil or criminal proceeding brought by or on behalf of the United States under the antitrust laws to the effect that a defendant has violated said law shall be prima facie evidence against such defendant in any action or proceeding brought by any other party against such defendant under said laws or by the United States under Section 4A which is what we read previously, as to all matters respecting which said judgment or decree would be an estoppel as between the parties thereto, provided that this section does, shall not apply to consent judgments or decrees entered before any testimony has been taken or to judgments or decrees entered in actions under Section 4A. So what is this saying? This is saying that any final judgment, such as the one that we just put on the screen, is prima facie evidence, okay, if it's brought on behalf of the United States for America or any of the states united, if it's because these states are, are, are who bring judgment in this manner, okay? That's why declaring our statehood was so important. Um, any state bringing these types of uh, lawful final judgments and putting them on the public record is on its face evidence against, and when it says such defendant, your case is more, because this is going to validate all, not validate, because our cases are valid from the beginning, this is going to affirm all of the cases that the Moors have brought previously 
on the public record against such defendant. Such means that type of defendant. Okay? That type of defendant is a resident on our land. So when you're talking about a resident on our land, one case will do it for all the cases, okay? And again, this case is not diminishing the power and authority of any previous cases brought by Moore's. Okay, we're just pointing out what we're what we're basing our final judgment on, aside from you know our courts, our nationality, and all of that. Okay, it says provided that this section shall not apply to consent judgments or decrees is entered before any testimony has been taken. Well, let's just look back at our case and see, do we have testimony? I just love this work. I'm going to tell you that I love it. So let's, let's look at our testimony because we, we put, we pointed in this case right where the testimony is. And more again, this is why putting things on the public record where you can get to it, or you can at least point to it is so important. So let's look for the testimony in this case. I put down here after the after the third one, and we'll go back up to that third one. Okay, Washington unrebutted testimony. Who is Washington? The Moors, us, all of us, and even any one of us. Um, not too long ago, we pointed you to a case where we saw. Um, it was a case called United States versus City of Seattle, okay? And when I looked at the case, they, it was a video of this case, United States versus Seattle, City of Seattle, rather, United States versus City of Seattle. When I looked at, and it, it, it actually said United States of America versus City of Seattle, when I looked at the case, first of all, in the video, uh, the people, they were in a room about the size of someone's living room, okay, it was a very small place they were in, and in total, in that whole room, it was less than 10 people, less than 10. It was probably about seven or eight people in that room, seven or eight persons in that room. There was someone with a black robe on. And then there was two tables, and at each table was either two or three people. And then there were two or three in sitting watching, I guess, or assisting or whatever they were doing. Okay. And I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. That is United States of America versus City of Seattle? And they were sitting at the table questioning one another and testifying and doing whatever, whatever, rebutting or whatever they were doing. Well, that let me know that they were doing business as the sovereign dead, quote unquote, and I'm putting that in quotes because that doesn't exist either. But two people were saying, we're the city of Seattle. Uh, two persons were saying that. And then two other persons were saying, we're the United States of America. But they are if that's who they say they are. And all they needed was ID to prove that's who they are. ID to prove that's who they are. That's all they needed was ID to prove that. That's why we don't use their IDs. We use our IDs. So what did we do? We pointed to the videos 
and the videos. Uh, Washington testimony has been taken and placed on the public record and is unrebutted. Said testimony is dated February 21st, 1441, entitled 1441-02-21, that's February 21st, 1441, I was detained and here's what happened. And then there's further testimony. Washington testimony has been taken regarding land waste and abuse, and we'll point that out where that came from. Said testimony has been placed on the public record and is unrebutted. And then we pointed to our video that we did where we gave testament of what happened and what we saw on our land. Because when we did our February um, demonstration a year ago, over a year ago, we were on the on our land, on our property, and we were pointing out the mess and waste and the abuse that was there. We we took photos and put it up of look at all the look at it was homeless clothing there, it was trash on the ground and all of that. And we went there to clean up. Okay, our land, because even before that, we had put on the public record testimony showing the title, showing the uh, um, everything that we needed to show. The only thing that, that we didn't show at that time, but it, it's been on the public record since time immemorial, is the Constitution for Washington and the, the, the county charter. But that's not pro tonk. And um, and then there, I was going to point to another video, which I'll have to do that. Uh, these are reminders for me to to point to that. Okay. Um, So now, when you're talking about, um, let's finish reading 5A and 5B, because that, 5A and 5B, is where we're getting uh, the law. We're, we're elevating everything up. And then leveling our charges, putting our charges there. Okay, so 5A, we talked about 5A. One case is prima facie for all such defendants. In any action or proceeding brought by any other party against such type of defendants. So more, this is the blueprint for you and for justification and affirmation where your merchant cards are concerned of things that, of events that violated your sovereign status. Okay? Of events that prima facie is a violation of the, of not your sovereign, not violating your sovereign status, but violating the Constitution and all laws made by the state that are not to the contrary are withstanding. Okay? 5B is suspension of the statute of limitation. So it doesn't matter how far back more you dig in your record and you find all of these old things that, that, that were done back way back when, starting with a birth certificate and a social security number. Those are violations. Whenever any civil or crim any civil or criminal proceeding is instituted by the United States or States United, which is us, okay, when we write this, it's us. We don't we don't use this because they wrote this. We rewrite it and publish it ourselves. Whenever any civil or criminal proceeding is instituted by the United States for America to prevent restrain or punish violation of any of the antitrust laws, but not including any act in action under Section 4A, the running of the statute of limitations in respect 
of every private right of action arising under said laws and based in whole or in part on any matter complained of in said proceeding shall be suspended during the pendency, in other words, is it pending, thereof, and for one year thereafter. So these were ongoing violations that happened. And we just kept doing a court action and doing a court action and doing another court action and getting our documents together. And then we had to provide, again, more a way for restitution to come. That's what the merchant card is, is restitution. Now, when you put this along with this last piece uh, to the puzzle together with a merchant card, and you forward it to the inferior court, it's going to be in court. We have uh, the the lower the constitutionally lower court uh, affirmation on our documents, and all more can use where there's the stamp for King County Superior Court and the stamp for Pierce County Superior Court and the stamp for Thir all more can use that because it's coming from Washington District Four, Columbia. The real Washington, not the fake one. You can use it in any of your territories. Or you can do it in, do everything that I've done, you can do it in your territories, and it's, that's for your territory. But, it, but again, it also affirms all the other territories. So it says here, Provided, however, that whenever the running of the statute of limitations in respect of a cause of action arising under Section 4 is suspended here under, any action, this is important, any action to enforce such cause of action shall be forever barred unless commenced either within the period of suspension or within four years after the cause of action accrued. Okay? The running of the statute of limitations is the time clock. It's the time clock running. Okay? The clock is ticking, but that is suspended. With respect to the private rights of action. So, many more have done actions where they uh put their uh appellations in the action. Just one moment, because we want to make sure. Islam, Islam Empress. My question is, <clears throat> isn't the statute of limitations does not stand if um, fraud was committed? Yes, that is correct. Uh, there is no statute of limitations on fraud. Okay. But 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 Empress, listen to this too. In in con, in conjunction with that, there's no statute of limitations on crime. Period. With the suspension of the the statute of limitations. Okay. okay. If the United States for America suspends the statute of limitations on all crimes in violation of the Constitution, then it's suspended for all of them. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. And I thought about putting fraud here, and I haven't ruled it out completely as, as part of the final judgment. Okay. Um, I may still do it. In fact, I think I will add that one and then put some, some of the uh, laws re related to that, even if I just quote the one law that says there's no statute of limitations on fraud. Or, or I could even use this one here, uh, 5B, where the statute of limitations is suspended. Great. Okay. Yeah. Ms. Rahm, great question. Thank you, Empress. So um, 
this is how you build your cases, Morris, okay, and have your merchant cards enforced. Okay? This is how you build your cases. So um, now let's see, uh, that's 5A and 5B. And then it goes into a whole other um, law. Okay, so this is, again, Public Law 137. This is Public Law 137 that we're looking at here. Let's go back. I'll go back to where it starts. There it is. Public Law 137. Page two, uh, chapter 283. And in the public laws is page 282. 282. And again, this link is in the chat. Okay. So now, um, let's continue looking at the document and then we're, we're just about done here with this document. So a couple of things I'm going to add is, is definitely going to be, uh, I thought about fraud, I thought about it, I thought about it. And I said I'll, I'll make that decision, uh, the final decision on that uh, as I go. So now with regard to this document, okay, uh, and we did antitrust, and then I said I'm going to, this is what I said, I said we, we're, we can quote the Constitution, which we're going to do that, I, uh, I needed to do that. Uh, let's see. The un, we put the unrebutted testimonies, um, and then we quoted uh, we quoted some things at the bottom. I'll put it down here at the bottom. I'm always thinking about the Constitution, and sometimes when you're always thinking about something, you take for granted whether it's there or not, because you're always thinking about it. The third uh, crime, I wanted to, to get crime that started at the top where federal crime, state crime, um, and then um, sort of natural law crime, okay? Federal crime, state crime, natural law crime, okay? So now the third crime is... Um, RCW 4.24.630, trespassing on sovereign property and land. RCWs are, um, quote unquote, well, this RCW is for Washington. Okay. Um, where did I get this from? When you Google, we did the same thing with these, with this RCW as we did with, um, with the Constitution. We looked at what the quote unquote state of Washington did and we said, okay, let's let's make this uh what it should be. Whenever you see uh for example when you look back in the corporate codes and statutes and you look in the corporate this and corporate that and you see the word adopted, we adopted this, that means they took it from the Moors. They took it from the original documents and they and they put it in black ink and capital letters, etc. Okay, so all we're doing is putting things back like they were in the beginning. Here is RCW, and RCW stands for uh, Revised uh, Codes for Washington. Revised Codes for Washington. This code, this code says, is liability for damage to land and property, damages, costs, and it says attorney fees and exception. And Morris, this is why I say please put those 40-something documents on the public record because in the 40-something documents, we have a sovereign lawyer document, 
The law, Yah, is a law God. Yah means God. So we have this covered already. Okay? From our sovereign state. It says every person... That includes those that were previously doing business as policy enforcers and all of that. But every person who goes onto the land of another and who removes timber, crops, minerals, or other similar valuable property from the land or wrongfully causes waste or injury to the land or wrongfully injures personal property or improvements to real estate on the land is liable to the injured party. And in this case, the injured party is the all capitalized Washington as issued by this sovereign state and not a dead sovereign state, is liable to the injured party for treble the amount of the damages caused by the removal, waste, or injury. Treble is triple the amount of the damages caused by the removal, waste, or injury. Well, what were we doing on the land that day? We were picking up their waste and removing it. And what happened? They came and unlawfully never had jurisdiction unlawfully okay they unlawfully acted it says for purposes of this section a person acts wrongfully if the person intentionally and unreasonably commits the act or acts while knowing did they know who we were yes because we got testimony on the public record as to who we are we're so glad that we did the videos that we've done. We've done hundreds of videos and put them on the public record. And they're on Facebook, they're on YouTube, they're on places that we didn't really even put them on because people, other people are putting them there, Reddit and other places. So they know who we are. So they intentionally and unreasonably committed the act or act while knowing or having reason to know that he or she lacks authorization to so act. Did they have a legation or delegation of authority? No, they didn't. And then it says here, damages recoverable under this section include but are not limited to, are not limited to damages for the market value of the property removed or injured, that's the building down the way here in our territory. And so listen to me about, about the building for those who are wondering, well, why haven't you moved into the building? We needed to show on the public record that we know how and why. We needed to also show competently that, that we have the ability and the authority to do commerce and how is that commerce to be done and recognized by all? We're doing that right now. Okay, we wanted to, to not just do it, but we wanted to put the information out so everyone can do it. We know we did the right thing because they, they, the, the occupiers have vacated. They were out of the building by the time the 10-day demonstration was done. That was quick if you ask me, because it's a huge building. It's huge. They knew they had to go. But then the ancestors were saying, okay, you have the building. The building is yours already. But now you need to show that you know how to properly move into the building. How do you do that? Look at what was done previously and then do a reversion of the state on everything, including the sovereign exchanges that went on with regard to the building. Okay? And this way, you have the subjects doing what they're supposed to do, 
which is open the door. The custodians doing what they're supposed to do, which is open the door. Unlock. And then what do we have to do more? Where our job is not even done then. We have to make sure it's locked back up and secured when we, you know, as we're going about our day, making sure that we're doing all the right things, even after that. Okay. So damages recoverable under this section include but are not limited to damages for market value to property removed or injured. That's our property. It was injured. And for injury to the land including the cost of restoration more. This is what we were talking about when we said that we can get, use our merchant card to get the building up to code. We got this, we just have to go point for point doing all the right things. Now see, I'll say this more, those foreign, um, the foreign matter, the foreign energy that say things like, why haven't you taken over the building? See, they're trying to appeal to ego so that we'll go and do something stupid and not put all the stuff that needs to be put in place in place. We're not stupid. We're not stupid. We know who we are and we know what has to be done. So what do we do? We put all the right documentation and paperwork and the exchange and the trade on the public record properly using our banking system and then putting the proper documentation such as title and uh, any any other documents that need to be put on the public record with regard to the to the property and then we say okay now we have our merchant card go and fix up the building because we're going in that takes time more it takes time okay so i'll say this too some may not be comfortable with this but just hear me i'm, I'm the messenger at this point just hear me uh, with regard to this more who get quote unquote supposedly evicted and and that that has slowed down greatly but more who who have experienced that first of all we love you and our heart goes out to you because that is not a great place or a great feeling when the testing is done that way um but those who've been through that test right there that specific test Nine times out of ten, the, the ancestors will put you in a place that gives you time to learn these precepts and concepts where you don't have to worry. And some are not comfortable with the places that they, that they, uh, that they go to, but it's, it's for the best that you are at whatever place you're at so that you have plenty of time to learn the, the precepts and concepts of getting the property back the right way or getting a new property the right way so that you never have to go through that again ever. And I've seen some more and, and more, very few more who've done this thankfully. Um, and the ones who've done it we love you, but some will get will get evicted, um, moved. I was going to say moved out, evicted from a place because they don't have the fiat to pay for it, and then they'll go and get into another fiat contract instead of taking the time to just wait a minute, go and move in with mom or that relative that you may or may not get along with or whatever, you know, someplace where you don't have those worries about trying to, to get on that fiat, fake, fraudulent rat race, okay, so you can take the time to absorb the information and put the proper processes in place, okay. The ancestors will give us time for, to do that. So don't um, 
So it's a good idea to look at the situation for what it really is. Is them giving you the opportunity so that you don't have to feel like you got to run out there and fill out a job application and get a job and go do this and go do that so you can get the rent paid every month. No, don't jump back on that. Take your time, get some place, and it may not be the big 10,000 square foot domicile. Take the place and make the sacrifice to learn what you need to learn so that you're never put in that position again. That's why the ancestors do it that way. Okay? And it doesn't matter where you, it does matter, I won't say it doesn't matter, but however, whatever it takes to get the concepts and precepts, do that. Whatever it takes to get them, do that. So, here it talks about injury to the land, including cost of restoration. It says, in addition, to all of that restoration and restitution and all of that, the person who committed the crime is liable for reimbursing the injured party for the party's reasonable cost, including but not limited to investigative costs and reasonable attorney fees and other litigation-related costs. Okay. So more is all the time that you put in to do the demonstration, all the time that you put in. We're doing the, you know, taking the time to do these things. Um, and the more I think about it, even with regard to this, in addition, the person is liable for reimbursing the injured party um, as part of uh, as part of, of this case, this final judgment, uh, just a moment, let me make sure that I open up the meeting. Okay. As part of this case, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and I, I had taken them off, but I'm going to put them back on here. I'm going to go ahead and add. But I'm putting them in blue more. Because again, you're talking about this is City of Federal Way Corporation, but really the land and Washington is Federal Way City. Okay? So we're holding this corporation liable as well. Because some of these court actions that we listed here that we did uh, are court actions that name them specifically. So, so that person is held liable also. So here we go, Moore. We have rewritten this RCW, trespassing on sovereign property and land. And then what we did was we, we showed our un, the unrebutted testimony that we did, that we put on the public record. And Moore, again, if you have not done all of this, if you haven't put um, testimony on the public record, you can do that at any time, and then that same day, get your paperwork, your notification of final judgment, send forth. Because um, I had not done a final judgment. I've done several judgments that are listed here, but I hadn't done a final one. And so this is going to be the final one. And so action number one, uh, I listed the sub-account numbers, okay? Uh, let's see. I want to make sure that I do this properly. Yes, Washington cause of action. And our cause of action is actually 
this right here is an internal file number. But the number that we put on the public record is this one. Uh, where is it? Right here, this one. The MACW numbers are, uh, MACW cause numbers, those are internal. This is for the public record, okay? Um, when I did the court action, this is the court action that, this is the cause court action that I did, okay? And then federal way. Go back to First <laughs> Avenue and claim First <laughs> Avenue, Polly, and your court action didn't work there. That wasn't much of a victory if you didn't uh, claim that building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stupid cunt. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh, you stupid cunt. Go back to First Avenue. Yeah. Pauline, I'm trying to help you. Come it to Detroit. That, uh, the Bibliophilio text says that, that God sits in the heavens and, and laughs a laugh of derision. Pauline, I will personally escort you to an auto manufacturer. Um, that the... God sits, God sits in the heavens and laughs a laugh of derision whenever subjects get out of line or, or start talking and doing crazy stuff. Fuck off, Pauline. You're full of shit. None of your shit works. Hold on. Because we're going to laugh. We're going to keep laughing straight from the heavens. All right. So uh, let's see. Oh, this is so good. Huh. You're right here. And uh, let's see. Right. Okay. We're good. So now, uh, let's go back here to the document. Uh, Federal Way City Sub Account, this is the real bank account, okay? Federal Way City is us. City of Federal Way is a corporation. Okay. So I want to make sure that I put all of this in its proper uh, status. on this court. Okay. Um, so I listed here another court, a couple of court actions that we did on the public record. Um, let's see. We're uh, City of Federal Way Corporation was involved in those court actions. Um, and then I also put action number five was the trial by consular jury of, of our peers of the person, that is Pauline Denise Ritchie. We did that on um, a particular video, and I have to put the date of that action as well. So I'm going to highlight this to make sure that I put the date of that action. Uh, I believe it was two weeks ago that we did that uh, that court action together, and many of you voted for uh, your, you gave your verdict of uh, free from sin for where our person is concerned, the person that we're the fiduciary for. And then I put. Um, Isaiah 33:22, for the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, it is he who will save us. Um, and I put, uh, this is what the legislative, executive, and judicial branches um, of government are based on. This is the scripture that that whole platform is based on. The judge is the judicial. The executive is the king, and the lawmaker is, or lawgiver is, as it states there, the lawgiver. 
executive, legislative, and judicial. Okay, and in this scripture, it's judicial, legislative, and executive. That's the order of this scripture. And I, and I put here, it is he who will say U dot S dot four, and I'll put here in parentheses for America, because that is our intention to say And in this case, we're talking about the subject. Because the subjects are part of the U.S. Dot for America. They're in the trust of America. And then I also put Revelations 1 and 5, which we know what that says. And then we put Job 32, 21, and 22 which states that um, I shall not accept any man's person, neither shall I give flattering titles unto man. That means we're not because it's against the law to call them judges and all of that. It says, for I know not to give flattering titles. In not giving flattering titles, I am my maker and I make myself free non tongue. And that is how we have written that scripture. Job 32, 30, uh, 21, and 22, the King James Version. And then I'll quote the Constitution here. And then part six of this will be remedy according to what we've already put in here. The remedy is according to the law. The law says 100 million, a fine if a corporation. And all of these here are corporations. So what is that going to be? A million for 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 Singh comma Ben, a million for Pharrell comma Jim, and a million for Huang comma Andy, and then a uh, hundred million for City of Federal Way Corporation. So we 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 justified what we've done. So really the card I, we're just going to put a hundred million and and let. What, we're, what we'll do is, where these subjects are concerned, we're just going to add, um, we're going to suspend their one million. We'll suspend it and just let it be a hundred million maximum for city of federal way. Okay. And then if they do anything further, we will add that one million that each of them, uh, that is being suspended. Suspended means put it off and they don't have to pay it unless there's another violation by anyone that is a, a custodian in that corporation okay by anyone and that that again that that goes in alignment with any such defendant that means a defendant of any kind that's similar to me Okay, then they're one million, one million, and one million. So that'll be three million that comes into play for these three defendants. But in the interim, City of Federal, Federal Way Corporation, that's a hundred million for them. So what have we done to, again, create remedy is we printed up a Federal Way City $100 million card because our we, we're not going to use anything that says city of federal way. We're going to call it what it really is because Washington is the real land. Federal way city is the real city. And the corporation of federal way, uh, uh, the city of federal way corporation only existed on paper anyway. Okay. So that's where this prepaid card comes from is we have given our, uh, we use all of the past things that we've done. Okay, we put the laws in place where antitrust is concerned, okay, and, um, and then we place a heavy tax lien on them, $100 million according to the law, and then this, this court action also serves as the invoice, meaning the money is already on the card. 
according to the liens is a hundred million and this court action is the is the judgment that is put with that lien. Okay. So this alone is justification, proper and lawful and competent justification. Um, and let's see, uh, monetary award to natural person Washington, accepted by sovereign fiduciary uh, Pauline Denise Ritchie as state fiduciary. And that's fiduciary for, for Washington, which is one of the states of the states united. Okay, and in reality, uh, I'm thinking this through as I as I go. I believe that, and and more correct me if you feel that this may not be proper, but I believe that it really should say this uh, it is accepting the amount. And the state fiduciary uh, is is that is this instrument. <laughs> state fiduciary could be a capital P, a capital D, and a capital R. It could be that as well. Uh, in fact. Let me think. Yes, because we have, and this is so important, because we have the documents on the public record that state that the original fiduciary is in red and all lowercase letters. So the living is the is the fiduciary. Okay. And then I'm using I the living am using these instruments in order to um just a moment. Uh, I'm using these instruments in order to get in order to use the to to create the card and use the one hundred million. And again, this is all in our sovereign state. This all this is being done by the Empire State. This is not being done by any dead entity. Okay? They don't have the authority to do this. We have the authority to do it. Okay. So, Everybody. yes, Islam. Hi, this is Tony from the Khalifa territory. Um, so normally in their language, uh, they would say something like um, Pauline, Denise, Richie, um, henceforth, Pauline D. Ritchie, since you got it on the card, uh, mm. as Pauline D. Ritchie to, you know, to yeah. say, uh, yeah. that's, that's the same. Yeah. You know, I hear. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I could put that. That could, that's, that's what I'm, a, I'm going to think about that, uh, Empress Chitali, uh, because that's really good. That makes sense. So what she this is what she's saying. She is saying put uh it should be in blue. This is really good. Ooh, that's good. And again, this is in our state that we're doing this. Because it's being crafted by us, we can do this.
if it's like uh huh. And so I was saying to say henceforth Pauline D. Richie because the card says Pauline D. Richie. Yeah. So just to match it up, you know. Thank you, Empress. <laughs> that makes well, sense to me. Well, well, well. That makes complete sense. Yes, thank you. Good looking out. Good looking out. Good looking out. You're welcome. I am. That's really good. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's really good. And you know what, Empress, that makes sense too because my Moorish ID says Pauline Denise Ritchie. So that's all, that means that when I use the card, I can present Pauline Denise Ritchie. This one, I can present my, my Moorish card and it will have the right uh, uh, appellation on it. For purposes of yeah. Oh, that makes so much sense to me. That's great. That's that's good. Ugh. So, Morris, this is how you set up your um your court actions and your cards. The cards are not. We're not creating things. We can. We have the authority to create it out of thin air, but it's not really thin air. This is based on the law. Okay. And you don't need to have as much, like I have, I really have about 200 and something unrebutted testimonies because we got videos on YouTube. You don't have to have that. You just have to have one. And for the Moors who have done court actions in the past and you recorded those court actions, that's your testimony. So you already have unrebutted testimony because you sent notification to them to come to the court, to your court. And because they didn't come, you have unrebutted testimony that is that substantiates your ability to create your final judgment and then create your card. Okay. So That is in totality from start to finish. It has taken us three and a half, let's see, now going on, let's see, 17, almost, almost five years. We're, we're right at five years. In fact, in three days, on May 18th, oh, this is so good because we finished our fast on that day. In no, on the 17th, we finish our fast. Yeah. But but on the 18th of May is, uh, in 2018, is when we did the inauguration of the Moorish American Consulate, and we went all the way to Delaware Territory to House the Reawakening Mines and Grand Sheik Taj Tariq Bay, uh, since the Moorish American Consulate for and and the Moors there, I don't want to forget them because they sent us too, um, sent us forth and to to do this work. And um, they're the government. We're the government. We're the law. We're all the consulate. All Moors are the consulate. So Moors who want to do things and say this is from the consulate, go ahead and do it. You're the consulate. You're the government. Go ahead and do it. Um, are there any questions or comments about setting up your uh, your merchant card? Because this is how you set up a merchant card and have it honored. Islam. Yeah. Islam. Islam. Yes. Yeah, so um, my phone was dying, and then for some reason it it got kicked out before my phone died. But so I'm back. Islam. Uh -huh. um, so the the demonstration of my Banking account, that's what I wanted to give testimony to. Yes. And um, I hadn't gone into this one particular account and on the online for quite some time um, because I had been doing things out of my other account. But so I went online today, and what was normally a debit of a, of a negative transaction was a positive in green. And I'm like, ha! <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
And, you know, I was like, okay, so it still says a negative balance. Mm -hmm. I haven't finished the process yet. So yeah. once I finish the process in all totality, then it will reflect as 100 million plus what they said negative would be. Yeah. So I, I I understand and saw that when I thought I said holy cow like yeah. and it was for things of the accounts that I had leaned so and I just leaned those numbers on yeah. um, those accounts like it was an Amazon card and something else a card and all I did was do leans so and that was it and so when I saw the the positive transactions in my account I was like wow. This yeah. is amazing. Like it, it is working. Yeah, it yeah. is working. And so, I was like, it's wrong. <laughs> Some people, and Empress, congratulations. First of all, thank you so much for that. You're but welcome. This is what we're doing. See, some people think, oh, it don't take all that. It actually does. When we're competent, we get whatever we want. We really do. Now, tell us what you did. You said you leaned. Yes, right. I had leaned all my accounts, and I had did a corporate cancellation of corporate contracts, and um, I had sent all of that um, to the Secretary of uh, Office of Sorry Office yeah. of Secretary of State. You know the office of um, the um, all these other offices in, in yeah. the state of New York, or yes, so they're your offices. They, and there are offices and all these yeah. different things and so on and so forth. And um, I also sent them the the um, Constitution, New York, and the Charter, and so on and so forth. So those mm -hmm. things I know is what has been the vibration that needed to take place for those things to happen. And wow. So, beautiful. Beautiful. I'm telling you. Uh, did the Empress send the liens to the bank? Uh, there's a question in the chat, Empress uh, Angel. Did, did you send the liens to the bank? Well, she's I, the bank. Did you send well, it yeah. to the custodian in the office of bank? Well, I did actually, but it was for another account. It's, but it was still with the same institution, for walled institution. Yeah. Um, but not for this particular one. Although I can't remember. Dear God, I've done so much. Yeah. I can't remember. But I gotta go back and search my files. I think I did do the lean. I did do a lean on that account as well. Yeah, it's wrong. But I have, like I said, I have to finish up the whole process with the card yep. and such. So yep. when I know, I know. When I know, I and then go and and go submit it and hand it to them as well. So when I do that, I know that everything is gonna just fall in place. Yes, 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 and more yes. And not submitting, but handing, because our courts hand down our yes. documents. Correct, Islam. Get it was, I'm just so I'm elated. <laughs> I am elated at, your, at, at at the demonstration that you did. I'm elated because I know in my knower more that we got this. Mm -hmm. That when we're competent, they have to do what we tell them to do. And that's financially, too. Oh, my goodness. We were on the train today coming back, and it was a USPS, and it had said something financial service. And I said, they have it in plain sight that the USPS is a financial service. Yes. Yeah. But there was another word in front of the financial, but it had financial on the building. I was like, mm, that part. Mm-hmm. And they're actually supposed to be doing gold back business. Mm hmm Yeah. Yep. So it's always been there. We just needed to uncover. So all we're doing more is continuing to uncover our vast estate. Yeah. And that's a high vibration frequency that shakes off the dead because it's, I always said it's like seeing a jackhammer go to work and go deep and once you see the jackhammer going in the vibration shakes up the earth yeah. and the concrete and everything just starts falling away and then you'll get to the uncovering of what was beneath that. Yes. Affirmed Islam. 
Yeah. And so, yes, I'm excited. I cannot wait to, to start, you know, commanding and, and getting everything that we're supposed to have as a collective. Yes, yes, yes. That is why we do what we do in terms of making sure that what we do is made public. Because mm -hmm. when we make it pub, when we publish what we're doing, Empress, uh, it's a record. You're already, yes, you are already commanding all that is yours to come to where it's supposed to be. I'm excited for us, Moors, because um, we're learning, we're remembering who we are and remembering to be ourselves. And Empress, did you have to go in and talk to anybody about the, those credits? No, I, I didn't talk to anybody. Actually, Thank you. I, don't, I, don't, I don't talk to nobody. When the phone calls come coming, I don't answer them. I just decline. I don't Thank answer you. nobody. <laughs> Thank you. If, if I'm in the mood or if the ancestors lead me, because any time my phone rings, my, I, I always check with my spirit. Okay, and it depends on what I'm doing too. Like I study quite often for these classes. Most of my week is spent studying for what we're what we're talking about right now, and that's why we're taking these this next two weeks away from the calls so that we can dedicate that time to finishing processes, Empress. Like we said, getting this banking process nailed down and hammered into our state the way it's supposed to be. Um, but as we're, you know, as we're going through, uh, through the week, studying and doing, doing things that need to be done with regard to these processes, uh, I already know that the ancestors are, are giving us all what we need to access our vast estate in the way that we know we should. A hundred million is, is, is really kind of like not enough. For what we have to do. When you see what we have to do, you'll know that that 100 million is not enough, and that's 100 million from every uh, resource that you've ever done business with. Every grocery store or custodian in the office of grocery store, every office out there, it's 100 million for each one for each more. Yeah. We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna need it. We really are. So, um, thank you, thank you, Empress, for that. Thank you so much because um, it's it's one thing for more to to hear those testaments from us. It's another thing to hear it from other Moors. You know, more we know we're gonna. I, I'm gonna demonstrate because I, I, as far as I'm concerned, that what what else is there? Nothing. Mm -hmm. We demonstrate. Period. That's just what we do. But to hear other more, it's encouraging to me to hear that, that you noticed it. Because, see, it's happening for everybody. It's just that some, it takes them a little longer to see it, and that's not a bad thing because we all wake up at the time that we're supposed to wake up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, man knows not by being told. We actually have to demonstrate and look for the changes. What you're doing, Empress, is all you did was go into the spirit realm and see the answer, and then yourself, your spirit spoke through you and said, do this, do this, and do this. You did it, and then the manifestation in the nap, in the 3D happened. Yes. That's it. And the you in the spirit realm is ancient. It sees into perpetuity in both directions, backward and forward. And it's all one circle. <laughs> and it sees you living in the future in the, the way you see it in your mind. Mm -hmm. So the you from the spirit realm is saying, okay, do this, and then do this, and then do this. And it's going to keep doing that until that manifestation that you see in your mind manifests in this dimension. Yeah. Period. So the 10,000 square foot domiciles is going to be very small in comparison to, you know, I see us all together, though. You know, I see us all together all over the land, just together, you know. So more of this, 
it's a wrap. We got this. All we have to do is keep moving in this direction, line by line, precept by precept upon precept. And patience is a virtue. Yeah. Patience is a virtue. Don't yeah. let your estate slip away from you because you're not patient enough to do the, take the steps and do the things that need to be done. There's a a, um, um, a question in the chat that says, did the credits come back to you from the companies you lean? It came back from the bank, which is uh, not the bank, the custodians in the office of the bank. The, the, the corp, corporate status was leaned off of her resource. That's where the credits come from. See, banks are nothing more than, well, I can't say that because we're the bank. Uh, Custodians don't do anything other than record. They are recorders. That's how come in their corporate status they're such good mimics. They mimic the Americans, quote unquote. They mimic Americans, quote unquote, because all they are, all that we put in them was to record. Okay. Mm -hmm. Record. Uh, Justice J, go back and look at some of the other videos. A lot of that information is in the other videos. I'll answer it here briefly because it's asked. He says, when you do the UCC1 lien, it's, it's, it's actually an affidavit. It's not, we don't fill out their, their forms. We do ours by, ours by government affidavit on government letterhead. When you do the lien on the straw man, uh, who do you send the lien to record it? We send it to anyone who's attempting to use a straw man and say that a straw man is us. That includes the recorder at Washington uh, District of Columbia Corporation. Okay, the custodians, and it's actually, let me say that correctly, it's the custodians in the office of Washington, D.C. Corporation. Uh, you send it to any, that's, that's one. Two is uh, any custodians in the office of Attorney General, any custodians in the office of Secretary of State, any custodians in the office of um, policy enforcers, any custodians in the office of judges or fake municipal or, or, or a fake municipal court, you need to be lean and fake so that that can become your office that you speak from. Okay. Um, anyone who's attempting to violate, anyone, any, uh, I send it out with everything. They, every every demonstration that I'm doing, they get at least one copy of the lien on the on the non secure warning, so that they know we're not at war. We're not at war. We're at peace. Can you all hear me? Yes. As long as I just tell them to go check my public notice site and tell them to, I I command them to tell to go look at those locations where things are posted because I know that's where they're supposed to do and go anyway. So I just yeah. tell them, go look. Everything you need to know is posted on the public domain websites and wherever yeah. else it's posted. So yeah. you tell them to do it essentially. There it is. Um, and I'll say this about that too. Uh, in this court action, this final judgment, I just put links to the videos that I did mm -hmm. where I was doing court actions and, and doing um, uh, YouTube videos, testaments, and, and all of that. Okay, where, where I did the court actions on them repeatedly. Okay. Um, and I think I'm going to take this out and put it on uh, because I don't want to refer them to their stuff. 
I want to refer them to our stuff, and that's why I rewrote this. Because they know where to find this stuff. Um, but I am going to put it, the link to it, on here. Okay. So are there any other questions or comments or testaments of um, things that you're seeing, changes that you're seeing uh, in the territories or anything of that nature? Any other? Uh, Justice J, can you hear me now? Because the other Moors are saying they can hear. Okay. Um, with that being said, I believe um, I believe that is all we have uh, at this time. So we will adjourn here, and we will reconvene on June the third. June the third is is our reconvening time. Uh, and be sure that you keep these dates in mind that we will not be meeting for the next two weeks. And that will give, uh, we will be available, of course, uh, by phone and email and all of that um, so that you can get your, your documents in red on the public record and then get the, get the commercial documents in blue on the public record. And that will give everyone uh, the time that they need to uh, put their 40 documents on the public record in red. It's, a, it's best that those documents be put on the public record, especially when you're talking about merchant cards, okay? Especially when you're talking about merchant cards. With that being said, peace and grand rising to the sovereign, original, indigenous, natural, divine air. Islam. Peace and grand rising. Peace and grand rising. Peace and rising. It's like on your vacation. Vacation. Yes, it's it's. That ain't going on vacation. You're gonna work and you're a workaholic. You know what? I am gonna be working. I am gonna be working for sure. Just I'll just uh, cause I'm always as I'm doing my research, I'm pulling things out so that I can tell you, but share those things. But this time I won't, I'll, I'll pull them out and set them aside, and I won't have to put them in any order until June the second or the first. Uh, and June the third is going to be a court action, also. This this final judgment will be there. Islam. Islam. Um, the telephone document with the um PDF chairman is missing from the last chapter. The last um. I have a lot of document David to sell the funds using my Um Can I have that document, please? Because I think I haven't seen the video with the document on the bottom. The like what, what document is that? For the sell the phone. Sell the phone document, the um, restitution. It's, it's, it's under the video. I'll have a look for it. And also, I believe we showed a, uh, we showed a copy of that document in the video. So if you don't see it under the video for some reason, because I know it's there uh, um, because this is the first time that I've heard someone not being able to find it and, and more will let us know if we forget to put the document under a video. Okay. So you can't just go ahead and look at the video and type it from the video. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. It's it's well, the invoice document was not under the video. The invoice document. Yeah, that's the that's the one. That's the final. That's the final document that you prepared. Yeah, yeah, with the, the motion chart. When you show the picture of the cell phone, and you already the cell phone with the motion chart. You got the yeah. invoice attached to it. Go ahead and um, look at the video and type it up the way you see it in the video. That's why we show them. That's why we show them. So sometimes. We'll pull them yeah, under there and under either, there. either either more, huh? Sometimes they it's make probably. it so that different ones can't see it. So
or sometimes like in this case I don't think I put it under there in this case I didn't put it under there but it's showing in the video so go back and look at the video and type it up from what you see in the video okay. yeah. Islam enjoy your two-week sabbatical thank you thank you thank you I'll be here I'm, I'm, I'm not going anywhere I'm here <laughs> I just won't be doing the calls that way I can uh I can pull new information out and and put it aside and not have to put it in any order until call time. You know. So we'll see you on June the third. And then for those that I speak to by video conference between that time period, I'll see you on video conference one on one. Or, you know, if you have any court actions that you're doing within this time period, please let me know as well. Thank you. Islam. Thank you, thank you. Islam. Thank you, Emperor Shatali. Um, testimony and all her hard work. Islam. Yeah, Emperor Shatali, thank you so much for that. Yeah, thank we you. We appreciate you. Absolutely. We appreciate all the empresses and emperors, the nobility. Islam. Islam Empress. Um, the Grand Rising. Um, the state um, templates on the. Um,